It's Fourth of July week. That is true. I have Thursday off. I, I do it. too. I'm very excited about this. Fuck yeah. In retail, that's a pretty damn special thing. Fuck yes. Day off. Yay. Happy. Um, but it also means that next week we're going to have some fantastic stories. Yes, because there will be beer plus explosives plus patriotism. Oh, yeah, that's going to be magical. And that can only lead to madness. Or, you know, good material. Or really great adventures. I'm more concerned with getting good material. Yeah. Well, I mean, for certain values of good. Yeah, it's it's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's good in the sense that it gives us something to talk about, but I wouldn't call these things empirically good by any other standard. Yeah, yeah, it's it's there's really, yeah. But uh, I let's blow our dick offs, our dicks off, even if we're girls. Oh, yes. Today is Canada Day. Today is Canada Day. Happy Canada how Day. Do you, how do you celebrate Canada Day? That's not a joke. It's an honest question. Like. Do they do fireworks? Do I they think do I am celebrating Canada Day? A massive game of hockey. I think I'm already celebrating. So yeah, everybody's saying beer, beer. So I'm I I'm right there with you, Canada. Beer sounds good. I mean, like we barbecue the flesh of dead animals and then blow things up. So oh beer and fireworks. Okay, so not so different than us. Canadians so like us. <laughs> Maybe they barbecue moose instead up there. I don't think so. No, I wonder what do you think moose tastes good? You're going to get another country pissed at us. No, because did you read the book Into the Wild? No, I have not. He's in Alaska and I think he kills a moose and he gets upset because it's more meat that he can eat and it all goes to waste and everything. But like ever since then, I've kind of wondered what moose would taste like. Probably moose tacos are amazing, says Sheliak. OK. And apparently you can get moose burgers. OK, so I, I don't want to hear about moose tacos. I'm just saying it's a plentiful meat supply. They're very large. All of the entendre, all of it. <laughs> Can we get to the nonsense, please? Yes. Uh, Do the nonsense. All right. Let's see. Where is the thing? Come here. Come here, thing. All right, each week, Catherine and the Radio Day, our audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And oh my. Crazy. Paula Dean! Do, are you following the Paula Dean <sighs> meltdown? As Isn't it that were? shit exhausting? Like. Yeah, first she had the diabetes scandal, and now she's got the racism scandal. I just don't understand, like, first of all, Alec Baldwin did a similar thing on Twitter, and that's not getting nearly as much attention, and that's kind of annoying. Mm. He threw out a bunch of homophobic slurs and then deleted his Twitter account, all because someone said his wife was texting during a funeral. So, first of all, double standard, hey. Calm your tits, dude. Second, I just, it's just exhausting, like... Like, I'm not saying what she did was OK. It's never OK to use that word. It's not OK to plan an antebellum themed wedding with black slaves serving. Fuck that shit. Yeah. But like at this point, like. Well, I'm just hearing about it. This kind of I think this is the. The good news for Paula Dean is she still has the potential for a career. The bad news is who's offering to give it to her. Paula Dean oh. offered six figure payday by porn company. Wow. I, I don't think I want to see that. No one wants to see that. Although, let's be honest. No, we someone. Know what they're using for lube. Butter. Butter. 
butter. Butter makes everything better. Following her admission, she made racist remarks. Companies have been dumping Paula Dean left and right, but there's at least one that's eager to offer Dean a new gig. TMZ reports that a porn company that features older women called PureMature.com. If you go to that site, it's your own fucking fault. Sent a letter to Dean offering her a six figure deal to endorse the site. Uh, full figured or thin, arthritic or di diabetic, you embody our perfect spokeswoman. The company wrote to Dean, adding that she's a, quote, MILF, and they are willing to offer her six figures a week for very little work since there's no nudity involved. No nudity involved. I know, man. You're going to pay her six figures not even to get undressed. Just That's like soft core. I know. But it's it's still this is it, this the face you I mean, want. If you're going to have Paula Dean porn, make it worth it. Have somebody like sodomizing her with a buttered up drumstick, for God's sake. Don't half ass that shit. Jesus, Tara. Well, Sarah Palin porn had a three way with Hillary and Condoleezza Rice. But that was Here's not actually Sarah right. Palin. Anything worth doing is worth doing right, God damn it. That was a porn star dressed up like Sarah Palin. That was not actually Sarah Palin. Well, yes. <laughs> but I'm just saying God. quality counts. <laughs> well, they're so mad at me right now. I'm so mad at you right now. Jesus. Except I know, I know at least one of you is turned on. This is not the, the, there. OK, there is no segment of my show that should make you want to masturbate, but especially this one. Especially this Ooh, one. I even hurt Mike. Oh, OK, well, that's not all bad then. OK, I think we should go back to our comfort zone, which is not saying a whole bunch. Um, this is actually kind of quaint for us, though. They do bury the lead a little bit on this one, but this headline it's it's almost quaint. It's 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 old fashioned. It's it's adorable at this point. You know, it's it's the happy days of yesteryear. Man found running naked, screaming. Indianapolis. A man was arrested early Sunday morning after he was found screaming and running naked on the city's west side. According to police, when officers arrived, they found a pair of shoes of the sidewalk. OK, typo. Pair of shoes of the sidewalk. <laughs> Maybe they were the sidewalk's shoes. Mm. The officers continued forward and found a trail of clothes. Further officers found a socks and uh, found a sock and a pair of jean shorts. As they continued further, a pair of boxer shorts and two shirts were located. Police say they heard someone was screaming. The officer looked to his left, saw a naked man running around in the parking lot. The 30 year old man ran toward the squad car screaming and attempted to get inside the locked vehicle. He told officers he had been out with friends and was walking home when he got excited and hot. So he took his clothes off. So this was Nelly. <laughs> a day, a day, a day, bay. <laughs> it's getting hot in her. <laughs> There's the why I said they buried the lead. The last paragraph. Officers say this was the second time this occurred in recent weeks with the man. Oh. <laughs> they are, the chat is pointing out that, yes, we do finally have a reason for the naked. He we have hot. a clear trail. I mean, I would say a paper trail, but it's really more of a fabric trail. <laughs> And we have a reason. It's not a good reason. No, but it's a reason. But it's a reason. So I am you. excited. Screaming naked man from Indianapolis. The thank part I, the, the part I love the best is when he runs up to the cop car, and tries to get inside. Yeah. Let me in! Man, I don't care. Even if you are a cop, a guy pressing his junk up to the window of your cop car. That's going to make you think twice about fuck you. I ain't getting out of here. He's probably lucky he didn't no. get tased. Probably. But anybody that eager to get into a cop car, they got to figure something's wrong with you. And also, you don't want to panic people with tasers and guns. 
Like, I'm sure they're trained not to panic, yes, but... No, I'm sorry. You could do banging on your window. Yeah, a guy runs... A naked guy runs straight up to the car and starts pounding to get in. My first thought is, oh, God, the rage virus is hit. <laughs> pounding to get in. Ah, uh, yes, 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 It's funny because it's two ways of pounding. Yeah, yeah it's a double entendry. Yes. I just... Uh, Twice? Why? Well, the first time wasn't enough. Obviously not. Obviously, this is how this man deals with excited. Oh, I hate to see him at Disney World. He's so excited. He just can't hide it. He's oh, my God, there's Space Mountain. Get my clothes off. <laughs> well, I don't think you'd get that far at Disney. It's Mickey! Holy shit, let me get my pants I'm pretty off. sure all those people in the character suits are like <laughs> Navy SEALs just waiting to take down anybody who disturbs the sacred Disney peace. Possibly, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, this is, again, the second time this has happened, which is kind of... I don't know how this keeps happening. Have you ever heard this? Do you know what blue ice is? Yeah. OK. That kind of makes sense. This is not blue ice. This makes less sense. I don't I don't exactly know how the fuck this happened. I don't like where this is going. Suspected feces from airplane falls on Ontario driveway. Two Ontario families said they are convinced passing airplanes dropped feces on their properties, but aviation authorities disagree. The Sullivan family of Mrs. Mississauga, Mississauga, I said it, hey, <laughs> I need a cookie, I said it, said their driveway and three cars were splattered with what appeared to be feces dropped from a plane. Quote, it covered, it just covered the top of mom's car, dripped down the side, splattered onto my car and back onto dad's. It smelled really bad. It smelled like it was feces. Family said they are convinced the foul smelling substance was frozen the side of the aircraft and fell from the plane. Um, there's no way one bird could have done it unless it was a pterodactyl. It came from an airplane. Which is problematic theory because pterodactyls are extinct. A similar incident took place in Mississauga's uh, family backyard last week. Both families said they blame planes for the mess. Now, Happy Canada Day. <laughs> Now, if this if this were Christmas, I think we'd have an explanation. Yes, be reindeers. But in this case, this is a, Mythbusters has shown this is how this works. And the, 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 the opening that could have possibly leaked this liquid, it would have only been like liquid that froze into ice. It would not they have been. I think it was frozen to the outside of the plane. Yeah, which would mean somebody went and pooped on the outside of the plane and they took off. But once a plane is in here, it gets colder up there. Yes. I guess it could freeze off and fall in chunks. I Yeah, but I don't understand. This is... I don't understand the physics of this. Unless there's some guy in, like, a Cessna who, who said, Hey, Gary, watch this. And he opened the window. And it was a hold my beer moment at 10,000 feet. Do you remember Independence Day when Randy Quaid was the drunken crop duster and yes. he did the wrong field? Yes. Well, they use liquid manure for fertilizer sometimes. Fucking Randy Quaid! So maybe some drunken fertilizer guy. Crap dusting. Oh. Crap dusting the wrong area. Uh, crap dusting. Thank some you. Some farmer wants his money back. <laughs> Uh, my sister went to co to went to an agricultural college where they use liquid manure for fertilizer and like the whole town reeked of cow shit because of it. I don't know how you could go to college. Like, I don't know how people live there day to day. It was terrible. <laughs> was it called Methaneville? Marsville. I. Uh, yeah, this they're saying somebody called Mythbusters. Yeah, guys, figure this shit out. Literally, figure this shit out. I don't think they're forensic Mythbusters. Mm. All right. 
we're back to this shit again. No, actually different shit, not actual shit this time. Um, Facebook again. Never stops being uh, for most of us. Facebook is an OK thing. We get on there. We post a link. We post a picture. We talk about our day. It's a thing. Yeah. It's just that one tiny segment of the populace. Gets near Facebook and all the stupid just comes pouring out. And we are in a day and age when if you you could used to say certain things and people would go, OK, it's a bad sense of humor, but he's just joking. Now they don't think you're joking anymore. No. And, this, and a bad sense of humor doesn't get shrugged off anymore, sadly. This one in particular here. Teenager in jail. For posting joke threat on Facebook. I'm going to go shoot up a school full of kids. Lol. Texas teenager has been in jail since Friday after making an offhand comment on Facebook about a video game he'd been playing. Justin Carter was 18 when he and a friend got into an argument over someone with someone over a multiple player online video game, leading the teenager to post a comment he now regrets. He now faces up to eight years in prison after saying, quote, I'm going to go shoot up a school full of kids and eat their still beating hearts only two months after the Sandy Hook school massacre. <sighs> These people are serious. They really want my son to go to jail for a sarcastic comment he made, Justin's father, Jack Carter, said. Okay. 30 years ago. Can I point something out? Yeah. We need to keep reading. The father uh -huh. gives the following quote. Justin was the kind of kid who didn't read the newspaper. He didn't watch television. He wasn't aware of current events. These kids, they don't realize what they're doing. They don't understand the implications. They don't understand public space. Well, whose fault is that, father of the year? If they don't understand this shit, why are you letting them on the internet? If you're aware that your kid has no concept of current events, maybe you should see to that. It's like, you know, if your kid's a fuckwit, take an active interest in making your kid not a fuckwit. That's your job. That's parenting. If you just let your kid wander on the Internet like this, what do you do for exercise? Make them go out and play in traffic? For fuck's sake. I, I, I just don't know how any parent can be aware. But like, yeah, my kid's a moron. He doesn't give a shit about the world. What can you do? Kids, right? No. No. I it, get off your ass. Stop watching Paula Dean porn <sighs> and deal with your kid. But I'm saying 30 years ago, you could say that horrible kind of shit and people would just think you were a horrible asshole. He, you, I mean, people still think you're a horrible right. asshole, but now it's a crime. Yeah. Now it's like people would think, oh, man, don't say shit like that. That's awful. Now it's like. Put him in jail, he's gonna do shit! Because he very well might, because that shit happens now! Which I think is wrong, too. Like, we we love to overreact to things we in do. this country. We do. We love to overreact to things in entirely the wrong way. Like, we don't do anything that's actually gonna solve the problem. No. But we do a lot of histrionic things that have no effect, but make us feel better. Hmm. Like taking off your shoes at airport security doesn't make anybody any safer. No. But we feel like maybe it's doing something. Making, you know what happened on the way back from uh, from my trip this weekend? They made me give dump out my shampoo. It was quite obviously shampoo. There was nothing else it could have been. I'm we, sitting, I'm know, sitting there going, do you really think this women is have C4? to dump out their breast milk that they've pumped for a long flight? Yeah. Like, these are not things that are making us safer. Everybody with common sense knows that. Like... Putting a kid in jail for saying stupid shit online, that's not actually making anybody safer. But we feel like it, it's, it's doing something. Well, no, at this case, it's poking a hornet's nest at this point. You, you're, you're, people are freaked out, scared. And when people are freaked out and scared, they do stupid shit like lock your ass up. Yeah, but like this kid's obvious. I mean, well, I can't say he's obviously not a threat to society because. God. He's but, a threat I mean, to himself. He's obviously just a moron. Like, there's no reason for this kid to be taking up space in a jail where no. somebody who's actually a murderer should be. No, but it's it's one of those cases of people be 
it's like you shake the badger in the cage. Don't do yeah. that. That oh. said, he's a fuckwit, and so is his father, and somebody should see to that situation. Yes. Speaking of fuckwits, reality TV has made our everyday living. I love the look on your face immediately went to, oh shit, reality TV. It's, it's poison. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? Speaking of. Mm hmm? Speaking of fuckwits indeed. Yes. It's, it's made our, our daily life just imbecilic and, oddly enough, more dangerous. And what do I, what do, I, do, what do I base that uh, assessment? Well, story comes from Kentucky, Danville, Kentucky. Um, if it will let me. Gimme, gimme, get out of here, gimme. Stupid thing. Paste, there we go. Um... Turtle Man TV show faked a snake in Danville pool. Filming wasn't approved. That was fake. I, I mentioned this show last week and I saw this episode. My nephew loves this show. I Here's here's the quote here. The, the guy uh, McKinney, is that his name? Um, Kentucky's Turtle Man. Uh, what's his name? Ernie oh. Brown, Jr. Yeah, uh, who's this McKinney guy they're talking to? Um, well, oh yeah, County Boyle County Judge Executive Harold McKinney said there are a number of factors in the show's filming that he wants to review. We introduced poisonous snakes into a public swimming pool. That is not good policy, and it's just not a good idea. I can't believe that shit was staged. <laughs> This show's on Animal Planet, and I, I mentioned it, like, the whole premise is he catches animals that are stuck on people's property. Like, the same episode, he had to, the llama that protected some guy's alpaca farm got away, and he had to corral it and bring it home. And, and yeah, there were, like, three snakes in the pool and then a whole nest of snakes under the pool toys. And they were all poisonous. Yep. Yeah. City Parks Department failed to obtain required approvals to film an episode of Animal Planet's Wild Band at the public pool where a poisonous snake was released and then captured. The city of Danville released in support of its investigation of the filming of the reality TV show Call of the Wild Man. The program features Ernie Brown Jr., known as the Turtle Man, cornering unwanted animals and using unconventional methods of capture. The report concluded the snakes were brought into the pool area, accompanied by a medic, and they were captured by Brown. The show left viewers the impression that one snake was found in the pool and the others were on the property, Turtle Man cannot be reached for comment. All right. There's even if he had been reached for comment, it wouldn't have been printable. The guy talks like Boomhauer from King of the Hill. I'm not even kidding. There is a big difference between removing poisonous snakes from a property, which is a, they get there, you make them go away, and bringing them there in the first place. Yeah. Like, that's endangering those kids because one of them could have gotten the fuck away mm -hmm. and then what were you going to do we uh how many snakes did we come in here with eight well presumably you sure it wasn't an six no it was eight presumably this guy's an expert at catching animals we would have had us a real show on our hands oh. or we would have had a real lawsuit on our hands but here's the thing. I, he did not get permission. This is not some sort of thing you just spring on people. This is not a happy surprise. You don't show up one day and go, hey, guess what we're doing today? We're letting loose poisonous snakes in your public pool. That's cool, right? You know, in the on the on the episode, he was his payment was a lifetime membership to that pool. I bet that wasn't even true. I feel so betrayed. Are you going to tell your nephew? I don't know. It's like telling him Santa Claus isn't real. Well, I got in trouble for telling him Santa Claus wears sneakers and drinks coffee. Do you want to hear this story? So, Fire away. You know, every now and then you find like a shoe on the roof of a place because some drunken idiot threw a shoe up there or something. When my nephew was like five, it was the Y phase. So why, you know, he's he's sitting in the car and we went to Dunkin' Donuts and mommy, why is there a shoe on top of the Dunkin' Donuts? And my sister going, I don't know, Patrick. Well, who put it there? I don't know, Patrick. 
well, why, how did it get there? I don't know, Patrick. So, you know, well, why, 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 why? And uh, so finally I go, Patrick, do you know why there's a, sh-? it was a, like a Converse sneaker. I said, do you know why there's a sneaker on top of the Dunkin' Donuts? I'll tell you why. Because Santa has to move so fast to deliver all the toys on Christmas Eve that he can't really wear boots like he does in all the pictures. He has to wear sneakers because he has to run really fast. And you got so many toys last Christmas because this kid has all the toys that he got really tired after he went to your house. So he had to stop for coffee at the Dunkin' Donuts. So he parked his sled on the roof, went in and got some coffee. But then when he got outside, it was really cold. So his sneaker froze to the roof and he had to leave it behind. And that's why there's a sneaker on the roof of the Dunkin' Donuts. I thought that was a really reasonable explanation. And my nephew goes, oh, and that seemed really reasonable to him. The Y game was over. <laughs> like five seconds pass. And my sister goes, that's not true, Patrick. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> what do you mean it's not true? How do you know it's not true? Why would Aunt Tara say that if it's not true? And we start, and I'm like, you know, I put an end to this. <laughs> you started right the fuck up again. There was silence in the car. And she's like, you can't lie to him like that. I'm like. He thinks there's a Santa. What's wrong with him thinking Santa wears sneakers and drinks coffee? Well, that's just not right. Like, why, why, that's why is sacrilegious that religious or something? So now he doesn't trust. I also told him once that the cannon on the front lawn of a town hall was the naughty boy cannon, and little boys that were bad got shot out of it. <laughs> so now everything I tell him, he runs and verifies with his mother. He doesn't believe anything I say. Which will make him a great journalist someday. He always verifies a source. Well, now you need to start telling him all true weird stuff. I just like Calvin's dad my way out of every weird question with this kid. I just make shit up. Makes him happy. <sighs> well, our final one tonight has got to be in the contending, in the running, for the greatest headline. I have ever seen on any story ever. And I'm not exaggerating. When you see this headline, you're going to agree with me. Okay. Here it goes. Brace yourself. This is amazing. Homeowner clubs burger with pottery holds him at elephant point after he urinates in basement, leaves beer in washing machine. That's a pretty epic game of Mad Libs, but I don't know why it's news. A Ballard homeowner clubbed a burglar over the head with a piece of pottery and armed herself with a brass elephant early this morning after the burglar urinated in her basement, left beer in her washing machine, and fought with her family inside their home. Around 4 a.m., police received a call from a 59-year-old homeowner who said the suspect had come through the back door or, or window of her home and was in the midst of a struggle with her family friend inside the home near 14th Avenue. Family friend had confronted the suspect in the basement of the home when he found him urinating in a corner. Okay, that's that's not how you how you do the Blair Witch Project. That's not. It's it's not. Also, uh, if you're going to go to the trouble to break into a house, use the, the bathroom. The toilet. There's a, there's a fucking toilet there. You went to all the trouble to break into a house. Use the proper facilities. Yeah. Um... While in the basement, the suspect had also placed an open 18 pack of Paps Blue Ribbon inside a washing machine. Oh, so this was like an ironic burglary. <laughs> now I get it. Family friend dragged the suspect up Did to the he, ground. Was he wearing a fedora <laughs> and like really thick rimmed glasses? Hey, that's mean. This was just, you know, bad performance art. <laughs> Family it was friend, a family statement friend. on society, man. Putting beer in the washing machine? Yeah, because like the man is trying to cleanse us and sanitize us and stuff. Did, did you pull anything stretching that hard? Just, I'm just asking. Whatever. Uh, PBR. The family should drink PBR. The family friend dragged the suspect up to the ground floor of the home where the homeowner and her son, and this is from the article, this is the word used, pounced on the suspect. The suspect struggled with the family friend, the homeowner, who uses a walker, 
grabbed a piece of ceramic pottery off the table and clocked the burglar over the head. She then called police and told a 911 operator she had armed herself, quote, with a brass elephant and was holding the suspect at bay. When officers it's arrived... Too bad that doesn't scan, because that would make a great Beastie Boys parody. <laughs> but the scansion's all wrong. Officers also pulled the... When they found... When the officers arrived, they found the homeowner's family standing over the bloodied suspect. The officers handcuffed and transported to the North Precinct. Officers also pulled the suspect 18-pack of beer out of the family's washing machine and discovered only five unopened cans of beer remain inside the package. For those keeping score at home, those missing 13 cans equal one and a quarter gallons of beer. At the precinct, the 21-year-old suspect told officers he'd mistakenly thought he'd walked into his own home. The suspect then complained that he'd injured his ankle during the incident. So if you walked into your own home, you would pee in, pee the, in the corner of the basement. basement and put the beer in the washing machine. I never want to go to this guy's own home. I never want to go to this guy's house. No, he must throw the worst parties. ever. <laughs> this is this is just a thing of beauty here. This is almost, this is theater of the absurd. Now, I do respect the homeowner because I am always the person yelling at the girls in horror movies who grab a knife because I am pro bludgeoning tool in this situation. You can stab a dude and he's going to run after you. You shatter a motherfucker's kneecaps. He's not chasing you anymore. So and you go bludgeoning tools. And you wonder why you have a fan base. I'm just saying it's good common sense. <laughs> And yes, I know you people, that's that's not what theater of the absurd means. But quite literally, this is theater of the absurd. I mean, ser fuck sake, seriously. I do not have a mace. I have I keep my baton handy. She's not kidding, guys. She's skilled. She knows what the fuck she's doing with that thing. I am trained in projectile bludgeoning tools. Mm hmm. And I think I still have one of my big wooden rifles around here somewhere, too. Yeah, it's not and, you a, know, I have things like a solid sterling silver hippo that I could brain somebody with pretty good. It's the equivalent of like a roll of quarters because it's a little paperweight. So, you know, I love that you sit around and think about this. How can I hurt people with things around my house? I am living alone for the first time, like ever. I'm a woman living alone. You have to think about these things. What are you going to do if somebody breaks in your home? How are you going to defend your castle? I'm going to bludgeon a motherfucker. I'm going to hide in the bathroom. Well, I mean, if that doesn't work, I'm going to bludgeon a motherfucker. I'm going to hide in the bathroom. Fuck you. I'm going to lock myself in the bathroom. That's My bathroom doesn't lock. <laughs> what happened to my boyfriend? Well, he doesn't live here. Hey. <laughs> He's lovely and very helpful, but he doesn't live here. So they were they were just like, what, 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 what? Oh, 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 oh. You could just hear fanboy heart shattering from across the country right there. No. So what did what did we I still I just love that headline. That is a beautiful fucking headline. You know, Jonah Spangle Spangenth Jonah Spangenthal Lee wrote that article. And he must be so happy. Because how many I know, times that's like he probably retired after that. That's that's your like, career right there. I'm out. Done. I, I am, can't signing off. So, yeah, it, it. So what have we learned this week? We've learned. I don't know what we exactly we learned from that. Um, it, Kneecaps? Yes. Okay. The Irish way, kneecaps. Okay, we. I think that's what we... <laughs> caps. We learned that, sadly, for all of you, my boyfriend is not single. We, we learned that uh, Paula Dean might be putting out some I can't believe it's porn. Oh my god, 
God, can you imagine if they got her and Fabio and did like a whole butter theme thing? I would, I would buy the shit out of that. Like he's all trying to sell her on margarine and she has to teach him a lesson. Yeah. Oh, don't whine at me, people. You know you'd watch it. Don't pretend you wouldn't. I wouldn't. Jesus God. You would because I would make you. Like that drumming thing I sent you. Did you watch that? I sent you a link yes. to a whole website of a dude playing. He's playing the drums with his foot and one hand while he's jerking off with the other. <laughs> For no reason at all. Tara, you're 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 inspiring me to learn how to swallow my own tongue. Well, if your break in strategy is hide in the bathroom, that might be a good skill. <laughs> We've learned that uh, sometimes there is a good reason to be running around naked and screaming, just not the second time. You're just that excited. <sighs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's space mountain oh my god it's not butter <laughs> uh, we've learned that sometimes people are just dr crap will just fall the fuck out of the sky literally so just crap bring it Bring an umbrella at all times. Quite simply, shit happens, for lack of a better word. Uh, yeah, get the Mythbusters on this shit. We need to find out how that happened. We've learned that reality TV lies to you. What? <laughs> Fresh creamery butter. Did mm, you ever watch uh, yes, Lindsay's review? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Fresh creamery butter. <laughs> well played. I didn't see who posted that. Oh, W.C. Wit. Well played, W.C. Wit. <sighs> we learned that reality TV lies. I'm so disappointed. If you can't trust the turtle man, who can you trust in this world? You know, he can sadly who you can trust the jackass guys. Because they'll really <laughs> do that shit. They really do staple their balls to their legs. Man, put a fucking toy car up his butt. Then went and got an x-ray. That, that that happened. And that's quality, people. You know, you might argue about whether it's smart or not, but at least they've got integrity. At least they have the courage of their convictions. <laughs> yeah. And and whether strange those convictions may be. And, and finally, we learned. Um, stop doing stupid shit on Facebook. Please. People can read ruining that shit. You're ruining it for all of us who just are on there to find out if our high school ex got fat. 